Okay, welcome to the new episode of In Shanghai Roundtable. Uh, recently, the uh, French President Macron's visit to China is one of the biggest news. So, what's the highlight of the China and French uh, economic relationship? Today, we invite two guests. So, I am Ludovic Weber. I am the CEO of uh, Saint Gobain Group uh, in Asia Pacific region. I'm Chen Ting. I'm professor at Fudan University. From the uh, Macron's visit to China, I can see economy is the key words. So, from your perspective, you know, as a single bank, is one of the 500 fortune. Um, so, what do you see uh, like your achievements in China, and what's your long-term target for this market? Saint Gobain, we are a leader on the market of light and sustainable constructions. Our markets are the market of sustainability, and they are pushed very strongly by the Chinese policy of dual carbon. Uh, neutrality target. So it's impossible to reach carbon neutrality if we don't do sustainable building. This is what we do. Th these markets are growing very fast and we have many ongoing investments. The good examples, EV. China is booming for EV. We provide the glass for the cars for EV. So we have a lot of ongoing investment. In the Macron's delegation to China, he brings about like dozens of the uh, business leaders from France. In your perspective, what will be the uh, highlights, like key industry or the key areas that uh, of the China and the French uh, economic relationship and co cooperation? Uh, together with uh, French President Emmanuel Macron, uh, we have almost uh, about uh, 60 yeah, uh, business leaders from French companies. Yeah, I think this reflects that uh, the business leader from a French company or from European company, uh, they just show or they reflect their confidence uh, of Chinese market. And uh, we have already the target for growth this year for 5% five, uh, five when we have a look at the visit of uh, German Chancellor Olaf Schulz. Yeah, he has also led a very large uh, group of uh, Japanese. All these, I think, uh, just reflects yeah, uh, the confidence of the foreign uh, in Japanese uh, for the future development of Chinese uh, economy. Yeah. Uh, when people are talking about uh, uh, economic relationship between China and France, uh, not only concentrate in this traditional aviation uh, or nuclear uh, energy as well as uh, aerospace. Uh, this time we have more yeah, new economic fields. Yeah. Uh, I think such as uh, from pharmaceutical uh, industry. Uh, like more innovative, yeah, yeah. technology driven industries. Yeah. Not only this, yeah, I think uh, we have also uh, shipbuilding and as well as, uh, yeah, like you have already mentioned, yeah, for the green economy. And we've seen during the past decades, the China's economy has made a remarkable progress. Yeah. So in your view that as you, your company has been rooted in this market for so long time, what kind of challenges and opportunities that you see? I see a clear switch from a growth which is quantitative as fast as possible to a growth which is more quanti qualitative, with more innovation, with more sustainability. So the transition that we are seeing now in China is actually, I think, quite beneficial to Saint-Gobain, but also to many other foreign companies. As far as I know that the global CEO of your company has just paid it to China, so what's the feedback? First, a lot of emotions, you know, a lot of emotion, uh, a human relation, and then he could feel the market. We made some visits, plants, also external partners, he could feel, I mean, all the changes which are happening in China, more innovations, more sustainability. It's definitely IPM and it was a very, very beneficial uh, visit for us. An economic tie between China and France. Uh, not only like help this benefit these two countries, but also help the recovery of the global economy. Um, but during the past years, we've seen this co collaboration sometimes has been uh, disrupted by external um, things like elements like uh, COVID, as you mentioned, or other things. So do you think this, uh, these challenges or the external elements uh, will change the big picture of the cooperation between these two sides. In so recent years, we have uh, uh, met with quite a lot of uh, disruptions. And nowadays, yeah, uh, people uh, in the United States and also in Europe, some of the people uh, uh, emphasize quite a lot about uh, decoupling yeah, with, with China, especially economic decoupling. 
and we have also the pressure from the United States uh, to Europe. But uh, between China and France, China and EU, we uh, do not have uh, geopolitical conflicts. Yeah? And I think uh, if, when people are talking about the relationship between China and EU, China and France, uh, the economics always playing a very uh, important role. We have also quite a lot of uh, connections, yeah, like uh, by the visit of uh, French President Macron this time. We have a very large uh, result, uh, I mean success. <clears throat> we know we have this uh, uh, joint declaration between China and France, which composed of uh, 51 points, yeah, not only concentrate about the economic cooperation, but also yeah, uh, the cooperation uh, about peace, about security, about people-to-people uh, -people exchange, which no doubt built a very good atmosphere uh, for the exchange or the, for the original relationship between China and France, China and EU. We have also have the Brazilian President Lula visit and also the leaders from Asian and other countries also pay visit to uh, China and also the many 500 uh, Fortune the global uh, business leaders yeah. also come to Shanghai. Uh, do you agree with this visit signals uh, the, uh, the, the, the real need of the cooperation to the Chinese market instead of the decoupling? Mm. Each visit which are made by global CEOs, by presidents, be it Macron or Lula or whoever, will help relations, will help smooth relations between countries and will help also business and people because it is nobody's interest to see rising tensions. We, indeed, we are not uh, seeking for decoupling because first it's impossible and it is not our own interest. It is not China interest and it is not Europe interest, it is not France interest. The last question is about, you know, this year's marks the 10th anniversary of Belt and Road Initiative. I wonder whether your company has get involvement of the, in this initiative and in your views that what's the uh, uh, practical significance of this BRI and how does it benefit uh, the companies and also the countries' regions along the road? Again, this shows that decoupling is kind of impossible because Belt and Road Initiative is like the opposite as decoupling, right? It's all about uh, strengthening the link between countries through infrastructure, through business, through uh, mutual investments. And, and actually, we see this happening, I mean, in Southeast Asia, in Middle East, in Africa. I can take example for uh, the results uh, which the Better Road Initiative promoted uh, between the cooperation between China and uh, EU or China and European countries, uh, say this uh, uh, China Railway Express. Uh, so now this, I think, is connect uh, about 208 cities in 25 European countries, yeah, which no doubt give a, a very big strength uh, to the cooperation between China and EU, with uh, France, with Germany, and with also maybe uh, UK. Yeah, we have the third party uh, cooperation, which I think is very important. Thank you for your time and thank you for sharing insights on this topic and hoping you enjoy uh, today's In Shanghai Roundtable. See you next time.